So, I got some dry ice. And I told some people I was going to get some dry ice, and they were like, you better get the camera out if you get some dry ice. My thought was, I'm going to get this Pentium 4 computer here, and I don't really care for this machine because I bought it for a part that was in it, and it's just been sitting around. There's some bad caps on the board. It still works. Um, we're going to try cooling the processor with dry ice. So, first things first, I'm going to turn on. This thing's a little noisy. I'm going to boot it up and we're going to see if we can get a temperature reading off the CPU. There we go. Alright, here's our current temperatures with the Silly Loud heat sink on it. I'm going to go ahead and block the heat sink here. See how fast that warms up. At 96, 98, 96, 98. Yeah, let's unplug it. Let's go that route and see what happens. There we go. No more heatsink fan. Now we're at 100 degrees. Staying in a solid 100, 102. Okay, yeah, we're definitely getting warm here. So, let's go ahead. We'll, we're just going to shut the machine off. Okay, so now we're going to remove this heatsink. Go ahead and do that real quick. It's just screwed in. No frills. It actually got pretty warm pretty fast, huh? So I my my imagination here is I'm gonna grab the dry ice with a glove and I'm going to uh, carefully hold it against the uh, CPU. Let's see what happens. And we've removed the CPU with the heatsink. You love when that happens. Give me a second here and we'll put the CPU back in the machine once we get off the heatsink. I don't want to pry against a nice copper heatsink like this. Uh, let's see. This is half the reason I warmed the machine up before I did this. I was just hoping the thermal compound would soften up. Oh wow. We may just grab a different processor. This stuff got solid. Eh, it'll work. Look at that. You don't ever want your thermal paste to do that, I don't think, because this isn't supposed to be a thermal adhesive. This is supposed to be paste. So we'll go ahead and put our processor back in. We're going to hope it still works. There we go. And we're going to get something to clean off real quick. All right, back to this. I got my old friend here. It's one of my favorite cleaners to use to get thermal paste off of CPUs. Some people like it, some people don't. I have yet to see it damage anything or eat anything on the motherboard. Losing my cap. Alright, we're going to take in just a little bit of acetone on a paper towel. Clean the CPU off. Not that I really care about the CPU or anything, so we're just going to get it all off there. The top of the CPU is now clean and visible. This is a... Let's see, what is this? Take a look at it real quick. This is a Pentium 4 2.8 uh, 512 cache, 533 bus. SL6PF. Alright. So anyways, we're going to grab a piece of dry ice here. I do not recommend handling this without gloves, and even with gloves, this can still freeze your gloves. So, um, I guess let's go ahead and just switch it on without the heat sink. And we'll just hold this on. Oh boy, does that make a racket, huh? Okay, we're holding the dry ice on there. All right, we've got the dry ice laying on the CPU right now. I think that's supposed to be a negative reading on the Fahrenheit. We're at negative 117 Celsius, which I don't know if I believe that's true or not. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the dry ice off the CPU real quick. Let's see where we go here. Oh, look at that. Five, 50, 
55. Let's go ahead and reapply the dry ice. It's going to make this terrible racket again. All right. We're back to negative 110 Celsius. Our CPU is now at 25 Celsius, 10 Celsius. Negative 125, or at least that's what it's reading. Okay, it has stopped making crazy noises. And the dry ice is currently sitting on there. Oh, it's making all kinds of weird noises. <laughs>